Well, here we go. Down to the absolute wire. Three games left, and the Kings look like they're heading for a play-in, although that's why you play the games. But, guys, how many times this year have we come on talking about the Kings with a big lead at halftime, and it's gone like that? I mean, the, the Kings almost trailed going into the fourth after being up by 19, Jerry. I mean, it's just unbelievable to watch this this season. What a Jekyll and Hyde team. You know, I was listening to some uh, – Got to talk about some stats on the Kings, uh, you know, relative to first half and second half. And it's a tremendous difference uh, yeah. you know, for the whole year. I mean, they're simply a lot better. Now, now the question you'd say, or I would say, ask, oh, why is that? Well, I think there's a, a couple of things that strike me as like, at least uh, lately, uh, I, I definitely think this is a more tired team being as thin and the guys – you know, especially Sabonis and Fox and Keegan Murray and, and and Barnes have played about every game. So that's part of it. That's, you know, that's an excuse, but I think it's somewhat legitimate. Uh, I also think, in truth, I'm not sure Mike Brown adjusts as much as most coaches. And and so, you know, when you got a nice lead, the other coach is making adjustments defensively and what he wants to do. And I don't think the Kings are really reacting as well to that or expecting to that. Uh, and that's uh, what's the third. Oh yeah. And, uh, and well, and then the other part is Ron and I were talking about this earlier. I, I just think when, if, if shooting 53s is your offense, I'm not yep. sure how much offense you have because, uh, you know, you just, you just need more, more ways to score, uh, uh, you know, productively. And, and so, you know, it's just like the way the game started, they made all their threes. And then second half, they didn't. And and they didn't get as many good threes. They had good ones, but it wasn't as many good ones. Yeah, Jerry, it seems to me with Coach Brown, it's kind of the story of Goldilocks and the Three Little Bears. The adjustments are either too soon or they're too late. They're never right there perfect in the middle or as much as I'd like them to be. Um, that's something that can change, but I think he's been a little bit handcuffed with the personnel and the injuries and playing combinations that he probably would not have played to start the season, but you're right about the first half and the second half numbers dramatically different for this team. Now, you know, and, and lately, you can understand it a little bit because Malik Monk, you know, they're not the same team without Malik. They can't make up for him. He, nope. he He's a guy that even when the team can't is not functioning very well offensively and, and, and they're just not nearly as good as a team offensively, uh, he could go get a shot and make a play. And, and, and I really think, too, he got some bonus two baskets a game that – that nobody else can get some bonus. And, and okay. I mean, I, you know, I was said earlier, There's I a lot of bonus, that. yeah, yep. some bonus had the worst game he's had since he's been a King. He was just totally ineffective. And I think he looked tired. He looked tired to me. He really did. All right. NBA guru, Zach, very good numbers here. Two points. Number one, Fox has gotten to the line nine times in the last four games. Jerry, is he not going in? because of not getting calls or is it Mike Brown saying shoot threes? I mean, all you had to do is look at last night's game. Shea Gilgis Alexander made a living at the line and you saw what the final score of the game was. So how do you answer that chair? Well, I, I don't think, you know, De'Aaron Fox is going to do what De'Aaron Fox wants to do. I don't think uh, Mike Brown is telling him uh, to, to shoot threes. Oh, he's not telling him not to, if they're good shots. So that's, you know, it basically De'Aaron can do on offense what he wants to do. He's choosing to shoot more threes. And, you know, he's gotten better at it, there's no doubt. But you're not going to get to the line nearly as much shooting threes, uh, individual or team. So, but so that's part of it. But, Jerry, at what expense? Yeah, De'Aaron's better at shooting the three ball, but he it's kind of been an or situation. It's not an and situation. It's either the three ball or he's at the rim. Yeah, well, I agree. With, I mean, here, my feeling is this: I'm, you know, I'm probably, probably the, the coaching staff wouldn't agree with me, but, but De'Aaron, you know, pulling up at 12, 15 feet or all the way to that's a seventy percent 
kind of shot. Yes. Well, was, that gets you on 10 shot, that that gets you 14 points. A 37% on three-point shot gets you maybe 13 points. So, uh, you know, I'm not a math major, but I know, you know, 14 is better than 12 or 13. And, uh, and plus the chance to be fouled more, which mm -hmm. there's a multiplier in effect. I think sometimes we don't realize this, but getting to the line is good. It also creates you getting in the penalty. So it creates more scoring opportunities for your whole team. And, you know, the Kings might go 10 minutes before they ever get in the penalty. And and as opposed to, as you guys pointed out, Shea Gilgis Alexander, you know, and others, you know, they're, they're in the penalty halfway through the quarter, every, every quarter. It's just this really is who the Kings are. I mean, they, they played 79 games and this is how they play. And we saw it last year, but last year they were healthy. Okay. And, you know, right now you, you don't have Kevin Herter and you don't have Malik Monk and you're still shooting incredible high volume of threes. I mean, look at Keon Ellis. He's the only guy on the team that shot the ball well from three. And you don't ever expect that from Keon. I mean, that was just right. like, wow. But everyone else, I mean, just it's just unbelievable to me. I guess the, I guess the question is, guys, is this the only way the Kings can score? I mean, because I've been saying this for two years now. The Kings really only beat you one way. That's it. The three ball. They can't beat you any other way. And they're still shooting the three. And yet their two best three-point shooters, for all intents and purposes, are hurt. And Herder and Monk, and yet the offense is still the same. You you made this point, Jerry and Ryan. You've been talking about about this. Yet defensively, they're better now with this lineup mm -hmm. on the floor. But they're not better offensively. And yet, to me, they still try to be the team that they were offensively, and it doesn't make sense to me because they can't do it. Well, no, I, no, that's exactly right. I mean, they they're just clearly not as good offensively, and they are, and there's clearly they're better defensively. But, yes. Uh, you know, and, and my, my feeling all along is, that, I mean, you take certain guys, you know, Harrison Barnes, for instance, who's a very inconsistent player, but he's a pretty good post player, but they never really post him. And, you know, and he's pretty good at drawing fouls. And, and I mean, I think there's, you know, there's things that you just have simply got to find ways of, of getting points out of guys. Uh, I don't think you can make up for Monk, and I, and I understand that because – you know, he's the third best player. And, uh, but anyway, their, their offense isn't as good. And to your point, Grant, I, I think, yeah, if you, if you try to play exactly like you played uh, when you had Monk and Herter, you're not probably going to be as good, which is what we're seeing. Napes, I have the audio of Mike Brown earlier in the road trip. If you guys want to hear it briefly, where he's basically saying three point basketball does not work in the playoffs. So the question for me becomes, was that a one game sample size where he felt the only chance they had was shooting the threes? Because after the game, he talked about them hesitating and passing up open looks, which was kind of the opposite. Or are we going to see this the rest of the season? Let's go. Let's hear it. Yeah, you got it. Here's Coach Brown. It, the, the thing I like about it is it, this is how you win in the playoffs. Um, you don't win in the playoffs averaging 125 points a game and thinking that's how you're going to win. That's fool's goal. You just look back at the teams in the past that were high-scoring teams. Fun to watch. I enjoyed watching during the regular season, but they were out after the first round. If they got lucky, maybe the second round. And you just look at the history of NBA champions. I don't think there are many NBA champions that finished outside of the top 10 on the defense and the defensive side of the floor in the last 25, 30 years. So that's coach Brown uh, before the Knicks game. Well, okay. Well, first of all, this team's got to make the playoffs and um, based on what Mike Brown just said, that means the Kings aren't doing anything in the playoffs because they're, they're not, I, I don't know how else they're going to beat you. It's really a very puzzling situation because I guess, Jerry, the question is, and you brought up a couple of good, I mean, you've been talking about Harrison Barnes and his strengths all year, and they very rarely even try to use that. I mean, we've seen Harrison Barnes at times, you know, the first game of the year, and there have been a handful of other games where you're like, wow. Uh, but then, it, 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 I don't know, it's almost like the Kings are playing four on five or sometimes three on five offensively. I just don't quite understand what they're trying to do, I guess is what I'm 
that's my frustration. I don't really understand what their offensive game plan, their philosophy is. It just doesn't seem to make sense to me. Well, you know, yeah, that's my thought is that, especially with Harrison, if you're going to play him, you got to get something out of him. You have to have some idea what you're going to get out of him. Now, there's nights when he's making threes, but but I mean, on a consistent basis, you can't have the three points one night and twenty the next. I mean, uh, you're going to give him minutes, and 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 he can do really probably what few players can do. He's always had a, a knack of post play, whether you cut him down there and you know play a little high low with him, uh, drawing fouls. He's strong. He really isn't as quick as he once was, where he can beat people off the dribble. So, so why try, you know, basically get him in an area where he still still can perform and get you some points because, as we've been talking about, their offense, they're not getting enough points. They've got to find a way, whoever they put on the floor, to get offense out of them. And I kind of, Jerry, I kind of hit on this last night, and I think we should expand the conversation here. I think there might be something to the lack of roles on this team. We know Demonis Sabonis is the workhorse. We know De'Aaron Fox is the quarterback. But outside of that, it feels like every basketball team I have ever played on or been around, you have a role on the team. And the Kings play positionless basketball, more or less offensively. So the edict is to key on Ellis to those guys that are getting extra three point shots up, shoot the ball. And to me, that's not normal. Well, you know, it is a, it is interesting because I mean, I think when you're, you're basically saying the yeah, a positionless ball and free flowing offense. And yeah. I think it's, it's, you know, a lot of the league does it. And I think there's a tremendous merit in it when it's going well. And, and you've got the talent advantage. Uh, I think in a situation you know, like this, where you really don't have the talent advantage. I mean, uh, I love this team. I enjoy the heck out of them, and I pull for them. And I'm truly glad they're they're in the thick of it in April. You know, yeah. we we knew for many years they were out of it by February. So so that's nice. But it's also true that you know, talent wise, especially without Monk and Herder, they they just don't match up with teams. So what I'm saying is. You, you've got to kind of find a way to get get points and production differently, I think. And and I think probably instead of if I were Coach Brown, I know it's late, but I would I would really try to get into some half court sets to make sure I could get certain guys a shot. Uh, and certainly with Sabona, certainly he's very good at finding guys. So uh, you know, it may use him. You know that you still use him that way or use him more as a screener away from the wall, things of that nature, but just find, you know, you to win now without, without these two guys, uh, Barnes has got to score more. Mur uh, Murray's got to be more consistent. You have to have probably 30, 35 points a game out of those guys. Now, how you, yeah. gonna, and that's really, I mean, I, I think it's that simple. You, you, go, right. you have to have 35 out of those guys. I want to tell you about Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital. They are a full-service veterinarian hospital located in Auburn, serving uh, the Foothills, Roseville, and the greater Sacramento area. Uh, dentistry, surgery, wellness care. They're dedicated to urgent care. Here's the bottom line. When your pet needs to be seen, they are available. Advanced internal medicine, full surgical care. They have the most modern technology, and they're very proud of their pain management protocols that will maximize faster recovery for their surgical and dental patients. That's Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital. And again, folks, remember, when your pet needs to be seen, they are available. All right, so let's get you to uh, the game tomorrow. Uh, a New Orleans team that has dominated Sacramento this year, both with a full complement complement of players and both without. I mean, they beat them when McCollum didn't play, they beat him when McCollum played. They It doesn't seem to matter who's on the floor. Mm -hmm. The Pelicans have owned Sacramento this year. What do you see tomorrow, Ryan? Well, I see uh, the Pelicans playing fast. That's what I see. And when the Pelicans play fast, it gives the Kings problems. Ho Jose Alvarado, he does not let up on that second unit. And, you know, Brandon Ingram still waiting on word for him. Uh, the Pelicans said two games on April 6th, so the third would be now. Um, so that makes a huge difference, Jerry, but I just think almost there's a kink in the armor. There's a confidence issue against this Pelicans team. Yeah, it almost has to be. I mean, it's also true that, uh, 
the, the Pelicans have owned them. That's without question. And if you're the Kings, you're saying, you know, if if you need a wake up call, you got it. You got three of them. And so uh, whatever game you got, you you should be ready to bring it and try to prove that you belong and can compete with these guys. So, I mean, you know, it's like anything. I mean, if Ingram comes back and, and you know, he adds a real dimension, but it's also true they've been playing pretty well without him. And, and you, you know, from a King standpoint, you're hoping, well, maybe he doesn't fit in so well early, you know, yeah. and it doesn't have the stamina in the game, you know, so there's that, but yeah, it's a tough matchup, but uh, certainly the Kings are capable of beating them, but they're going to have to, uh, basically find a way to score more points than they're scoring. Is it odd to um, each of you that the Kings struggle to guard Brandon Ingram when Sabonis and the Kings do so well with Anthony Davis? Well, you know, Ingram is is really such a, a, a different kind of wing player. I, I really think that uh, uh, Keegan should be able to guard him, to make mm. it tough on him. I don't know that he played him uh, – really before but i i think the matchup isn't bad there uh you know you know mccullum the matchup really isn't that bad i mean it's one of those things when you look at the line of valentunos and Sabon, it isn't that bad now <laughs> now i i i thought before their bench was such a difference trey murphy came off the bench yeah and, and alvarado and, and those guys really created some problems herb jones i think came off the bench herb too uh, some of them so I, I thought their bench was much deeper and better than the Kings. Uh, as far as the starters, I thought the, the matchups, you know, I'm not saying it worked, but it but it shouldn't be anything that scares you. All right. So the Pelicans have uh, obviously the Kings at the Warriors, home Lakers. In order for the Kings to even have a chance uh, of, of finishing out of them, they would have to go 3-0 and and the Pelicans would have to lose all three games. And, and then you have the Suns. I mean – I don't know how you explain that game last night for Phoenix. I mean, that that score at the end of the first quarter reminded me of the game, Jerry, that uh, got you, uh, you know, eighteen inches over. Uh, yeah. When Phil, when Phil uh, got fired after you guys only scored four points on four free throws in the first quarter against the Lakers and they were down forty to four. That's what that game looked like last night to me in the first quarter. I couldn't believe it. I, I just couldn't believe it. And they do it again tonight. And here's the other deal. Kawhi Leonard and James Harden in play, and the Clippers still mop them up. I just still cannot figure out what happened last night in Phoenix. No, especially with their talent base. You know, I mean, any uh-huh. team with Booker and Durant and, and, you know, of course, Beal too. But, but I, I mean, yeah, for them to be in that, it's just hard to figure. I mean, they've been – Maybe honestly more inconsistent than have the Kings when you really look at yeah what they have been expected but, and, and their talent base and you know uh, so yeah it's hard to and I have no explanation for them I mean I, I just think they're a team that's underachieved for sure but you know your your point when you know I can see the Pelicans losing all three yes yeah now, the better can the Kings win all three that's but that that's they're they're capable of that that's one of the things. You know, at the end of it, they're at home. They're at you know home. what, Ryan? The King, the, knowing the Kings, they'll win against New Orleans and Phoenix, and then lose. Yep, <laughs> lose against Portland. 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 Yeah, <laughs> it, it's what yeah. they'll do. They'll yeah. find a way. There's no yeah. doubt. That's yeah. Chris, a, Mur- Chris Murray from Portland will go for a career high thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, hey, that's the, the way right this here. season has gone. It really has. Oh. Hey, I want to tell you about uh, Fosters and Paws. They're looking for donors, Fosters, uh, adopters. Uh, they have puppies available right now. They are a group of passionate animal advocates. They work primarily with dogs and shelters. They also do a phenomenal job with young people, teaching them the lifelong benefit of uh, having pets. Go to fostersandpaws.org slash adopt and adopt a puppy today. That's fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. But I'm with you. I I could see, you know, the question is, and it probably will be, will the Lakers game in New Orleans, will that be an important game for the Lakers? The Lakers and the Warriors are going to be 9 and 10 in all likelihood. Uh, So to me, I think the most likely scenario right now is Sacramento and Phoenix in the play. And the question is who would be seven and who would be eight. And, uh, you know, we were, I was talking about this with Ryan in that scenario. It's not Durant that's, that, that scares me the most. You know what, who it's Devin Booker. 
Yep. Th- 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 that's who the guy that would would really make me nervous in that type of a game. And we've seen it before where he just destroys Sacramento, and he's the guy that can absolutely take over a game. I know Durant can, but, I mean, Booker to me is just a mm, – that's the guy. He, he's more of a – I mean, a real hungry scorer. Yes. I, say. I mean, you know, if he if he gets it going, I mean, he he's going to want – he wants to put 50 on you, where Durant just kind of takes what the defense gives him – you know, he gets his 25 or 30 more comfortably, but I agree. I mean, to me, I always said uh, Booker is a, is a mini, mini Kobe. Uh, mm, wow. You know, he's a smaller, but, and that's of course his hero. And you, but you can see the, I mean, the, the hunger, how he plays, how he wants to play, how he wants, he'd gladly shoot every ball. If he, I mean, he's one of, like I say, and, and uh, those guys scare me, especially him because, you know, he can get 50, any night. Well, what scares me about them is the pick and roll. It, it comes down to the pick and roll for the Kings, how they're going to defend that. If they can switch on the perimeter and kind of keep Booker under control, I think it's a decent matchup for them because I've looked at Phoenix all along, guys, and thought it just doesn't work. It's a new owner that brought in Durant, tried to fast lane a championship, and I think that's part of the reason Phoenix has some issues now with inconsistency, much like the Kings. Well, I think adding Booker or Booker, I mean, uh, Bradley Beal was probably a mistake and he's a very good player, but he's not a superstar anymore. And you're paying, I mean, in in most of the games, I mean, Grayson Allen, you might say, has been more valuable and uh, an excellent player, which Milwaukee probably that's another classic screw up in my mind on that team. They they miss him at uh, 48% three point shooter, but uh yeah, I, I mean, I think with with uh, Booker, I mean, I think and Coach Brown, I know has, has tried this. I mean, especially now without uh, Monk, I mean, I think you just run different guards at him. I mean, I think you show him Keon Ellis for a while. You show him Davion. They they show different things. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, Fox has improved so much defensively, and he'll and he'd take the challenge on Booker. So and you know, Booker's gonna get his points, but I, I just think. Man, show him different fresh bodies, different bodies. Uh, see if it can throw him off his rhythm. You know, speaking of Phoenix, I mean, think about this. So they got the Clippers tonight. And then, obviously, uh, a day off to get ready for Sacramento. And they'll be in Sacramento as the Kings tomorrow are playing New Orleans. And then think about this. The Suns have to wrap up the season in Minnesota against the T-Wolves, who are right now locked in a very tight race in the West for the top spot with the Denver Nuggets and Oklahoma City. Those three teams are only separated by one game. Minnesota and Denver are 55 and 24. OKC is 54 and 25. So the Timberwolves have a lot to play for. You know, if the Suns lose tonight, right? Mm-hmm. If they lose tonight, mm-hmm. you know, you could still you could still be looking at a realistic scenario. Of the Pelicans and the Suns coming down to the final game where they've got to win at Minnesota and home against the Lakers, respectively, to finish ahead of Sacramento. So, you know, this thing's not over yet, guys. It's not over yet. Oh, no. No, absolutely not. And and I think that's that's the one thing the Kings, you know, uh, they, it's a tough schedule for a lot of them. But they're at home. They are at home. And – uh they know the situation. They 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 know they've got to win them. You know, I I'd actually feel very good about these three games if if Monk was available. You know, right. I mean, because he's a big game guy. You know, I mean, that's I always saw it last year in the playoffs. I mean, Malik Monk was the King's best player. <laughs> and, he, he was I mean, pretty he, special. He, yeah, I mean, he really. You know, I mean, he's capable of of getting twenty five uh, and a half. Not many reserves can do that. We've seen him do it. Yeah. Well, but it really, again, it's it's in Sacramento's control. And first things first, they they have to figure out the riddle of the, the New Orleans Pelicans who, you know, again, they're playing that extra game against them because of this stupid NBA uh, in-season tournament. So, you know, they're, they're, this is the fifth game against New Orleans. And, you know, you look at Phoenix, um, I don't know. I, I guess there are, we just talked about this a couple of minutes ago. They're, to me, just like Sacramento. I never know what to expect game to game from the Phoenix Suns. I don't know what to expect game to game from Sacramento. They're almost mirror images of one another. 
Yeah, they I mean, I think so much of, of both teams. I mean, not just three point shooting, but uh, you know, they've got a couple of guys that have to score for them. And if you know, if Durant is struggling, which he has against the Kings a little bit, yeah, they, they have a chance to beat him. And uh, so you know, it's like the Kings now. Fox has to have a big game to have a have a chance. Uh, you know, there's no. I mean, uh, going down the stretch here. De'Aaron Scott averaged 30, 35 points on, on, on fewer shots, I would say. So, and for the Kings to have a chance. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Jerry. And the other thing, I think the Kings are the physical, they're more physical team. If you match them against the Suns, I don't think the Suns like to play a physical brand, but again, it's those wide open threes, Grayson Allen, now it he's with the mm -hmm. Suns the rest of the season. So uh, we'll see what well, their bench does. The thing that, uh, again, concerns me about the Suns game is it's Sacramento's third game in four nights mm -hmm. where the Suns play tonight and then they don't play tomorrow. And so that is an advantage for them. And we saw the last time the Kings had three games in four nights with a travel day in between. They got humiliated by Dallas. They got embarrassed. I mean, yeah. they just – so, you know, again, it's – it's not the greatest schedule in the world, but at this point, I mean, you know, if you can't muster up enough energy to figure out how to win a must win game at home with, with a chance to solidify a playoff spot and have to go into with and not have to participate in the play in, I, I don't know what, I mean, it shouldn't really matter. I mean, it, it just, I don't know what else you need to play for. You're playing for a playoff spot. That's what you're playing for. Not the play in a playoff spot. So it, it's right there for you. If I'm Mike Brown, I am putting up on a billboard all of the bad losses this year, right in front of the Kings and saying, yet yeah, you are still in this position. You are still right here in control of your destiny at the end of the season and maybe try to inspire them that way. Jerry, you were a coach. What would you do to get these guys fired up? Well, I, I think it goes back to what if, if, in fact, they don't understand I mean, I don't think any words from Mike Brown at this stage could make a difference. I mean, I agree. You're playing for your to get, uh, as Grant said, a, a playoff spot against a team that has humbled you. Uh, they've absolutely beat you in the mud, and yep. uh, so so if you can't if you can't come out of the box really on fire, then and I'd be surprised business. if they don't. You know, I mean, I'd be surprised. I I wouldn't say they could play their best game and still lose because the Pelicans are very good, very talented, but I'll, yep. I'll be really surprised if we don't see a great effort by the Kings and it with a chance to win. And to yep. your point, I, I, I think this is a game where this is on the players. I mean, if they don't, if they can't, sure. uh, you know, at some point, uh, you know, you, you got to carry your own water. Yep. Uh, very true. Hey, don't forget about uh, Bennett's Sacramento Roseville, and Rockland at the West Side Grill, prime seafood and steak. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. Make a reservation and more. Uh, they are awesome. You'll love the food, the prime seafood and steaks. At Bennett's, don't forget Sacramento Fair Oaks and the West Side Grill in Rockland. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. All right, so what do you do with Zion Williamson, Jerry? <laughs> well, you hope, he, you, know, you hope he gets in foul trouble. I, I do think you go at him, if, you know. Yeah, you, I agree. You really want to attack him on the make him play defense. He's really not a particularly good defender. And uh, you know, so do that and and you know, they've got him, you know, playing lead guard a little bit. So pick him up, pressure him as much as you can. And I think you can you know, bother him number one, but you can bother the team because you could keep them from getting in their offense, uh, you yeah. know, quick. So I those two things, I mean, if he gets the ball around the basket, and he's going to power through anybody in there. You just got to try to get him in foul trouble first and attack him and then make him work to get any kind of position. Yeah, and it's actually, I think, a little bit okay from time to time if the Kings let him get by or get a step on them as long as they're rotating on the backside of that defense and stepping up for charges like they like to do because Zion sometimes can be out of control, and that's a damn good way to get him on the bench early. Well, there's probably only two guys that's going to stand in there. <laughs> he, hey, <laughs> Keegan Maybe. will do it. Keegan will. Uh, Keegan Maybe will do it. And, uh, who? Keegan. Keegan oh, would hundred percent. Keegan and Davion and and I think Trey Lyles. I mean, not saying yep. others wouldn't, but but I mean that's a 
That's that a, is a massive, massive man. It's a train. <laughs> you know, that, that could be a, that's a, so anyway, but you're right. I mean, it, he's going to be coming in there and, and you, you'll, you can't stop him at the rim. You got to stop him in front of the rim, in front of that, well, the, the, that the, circle. The, the, the play-in tournament really starts tomorrow. It doesn't, it doesn't start next week. It's, it starts tomorrow. You know, we keep on talking about, you know, what Sacramento has to play for and their motivation. It's the same way on the other side of the floor. I mean, yeah. New Orleans and Phoenix had the exact same thing to play for, you know, uh, as the Kings do. And that's why I think these next two games, I mean, if you have a ticket to these next two games, it's a good ticket to have. These are going to be really fierce games. And I think it's going to be very – Interesting to see how these games are officiated. It's going to be very interesting. The Kings have not done a good job getting to the line. And the last several games, once again, they've had free throw issues, not shooting a high percentage, missing a lot of free throws. That just can't happen tomorrow and against the Suns. It just can't happen. No. Uh, the times the Kings have played the best this season are when they are shooting as many free throws as their other or their opponents are attempting or making as many as their opponents attempt. And they can do it. It's just a mindset and getting there. Yeah. No, yep. it's, uh, I mean, it's, it really is. It'll be a, uh, I can't wait for the games. I mean, like I say, I'm excited. I, you know, we all are disappointed in some way or another, but yet uh, this team is a 45 win team and they, you know, and we're in April, April, a week before the playoffs and play in, and the Kings. You know, uh, we've two straight years we've had it had a team that's uh, in the thick of it. You know, and generally fun to watch. And uh, so, but it's on them uh, just how good they are. And 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 quite honestly, uh, it's on them because Coach McNair and or Coach uh, Brown and McNair are, are evaluating this team, and and clearly there's a. Uh, there's changes need to be made and added. And, and so that, that's uh, all these things are out there. This is uh this is professional basketball. You don't yep. uh, get to keep your spot uh, automatically. Jerry, Carl Anthony towns may be back this weekend and Minnesota without him has played very well. They're currently first place with Denver. They've won eight of 10. How do you do that? Jerry, without messing up what's been a really good rhythm for the Timberwolves? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I because I I mean I'm not too surprised that the Timberwolves played that, that well without him because Nas Reed is in his own way is every bit as good. He just can't score. But I mean he's a he's a baller, lively, athletic guy. And uh, uh, now with with Towns back, obviously that makes adjustments for Edwards in particular. Uh, Gobert's got to cover for him a little bit more. You know those kind of things. I, I'm just. Uh, the only the only thing with with uh, Minnesota is is Towns. Uh, they don't have to have him come back and be as good as he can be because they've got Nas Reed. You know, yes, I mean, that's you what's know, that, that do that, up here though with Towns. Well, that's what I want to get to because uh, see, I don't know Carl Anthony Towns and, and and I don't know about ego and whether he's able to do that. And again, maybe not the best comparison in the world, but I, I want to remember, uh, and, it, and it happened on March 2nd, the Kings had the best record in the NBA when Chris Webber came back for the first time. And from that point forward, the Kings were only a 500 team. It completely affected the rhythm. And Chris was not willing, not willing to take a backseat to anybody. So I don't, I don't know Carl Anthony Towns' personality. Is is he going to be, hey, you know what? I don't want to mess things up. Coach, you know, play me when you have to. I, I don't know what the ego and everything is. But there there is all, that does factor into this, Jerry. Sure, it always does. I mean, absolutely. I I don't, you know, and I don't know with, with Nas Reed. I mean, he may be, say, hey, I'll go, uh, you know, it's your job when you get come back and I'll, I'll adjust and, and, and all that. Uh, so, you know, I will say this. I think uh, Coach Finch has done a marvelous job there, and so uh, you know they've they've got you know they've got a chance to be the best in the West, and they probably do need Carl Anthony Towns uh, to do that. Uh, but then again, he he really you great point. He needs to come and fit in a little more maybe than he did before. And I want to point something out. Uh, this rematch tonight in L.A. No Paul George, no Kawhi Leonard, no James Harden. If the Phoenix Suns do not win tonight, just flush them down the toilet. They're done, okay? 
So I'd be, with that said, I will be shocked, not surprised. I will be shocked if the Phoenix Suns do not win tonight. Yeah, and, that's, and let me ask you something, too. I mean, I think that's just disgusting on the NBA's part. I mean, the Horrible. Clippers have got their spot sewed up. Yep. And so now what are the injuries that are keeping these guys out? I'd like to know exactly what, what the injuries are. You And you want to know who else is not playing tonight in a game that probably would – be lost anyway. Victor Wembanyama. You want you want to know what his injury is tonight? <laughs> you ready for this? Hit us. The official reason: right ankle injury management. They're resting him tonight against Chet Holmgren. A game that most NBA fans would love to see. Okay, Oklahoma City fighting for playoff position, either one, two, or three. And Victor Wembanyama, who could play no problem, is being held out for rest. That's pop. And they're saying injury management. Stop it already. Like, what pop. a joke this is. It it's is. What's wrong with the league? It's what's it wrong with the league? Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, and especially when you throw in the idea of all the, you know, the gambling stuff to boot, it just creates all kinds of issues that don't need to be there. And yeah, very disappointing. Unbelievable. So, Ryan, th there's no way the Suns are going to lose tonight, right? No Paul George, no Kawhi Leonard, no James Harden. Hey, it's a game the Kings could lose very easily, and the Suns are very similar to the Kings, but I'm going to go with you and say no. There's no way they lose this one. And by the way, Russell Westbrook and uh, Zubats, they're questionable. Huh. So, I mean, the, the Clippers are just mailing it in tonight is what they're doing. Well, well, they want uh, Grant. Grant, they won the games to do it. Uh, uh, that's the counter side of the argument. For the league. It Playing is, by the right. rules. Well, you, you, know you, would, it, you know, you I don't have think. a problem doing it. I don't have a problem doing it on game eighty-two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do have a problem with three games left. That's the big issue. If you want to hold everyone out on the last game, okay. You know what? I get that. You'd see it in the NFL every year. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't like it, but I understand it. Three games left, really? Come on now. Yeah, yeah, that's way that's where I'd see it. I mean, it's like, yeah, okay, you got your spot sewed up and you certainly don't want to risk injury or anything, but that's game eighty two. And uh and certainly the guys, that's when they need rest before the thing starts. Uh so and, and speaking of rest, help me out here. Why is Kevin Durant and Devin Booker playing forty minutes last night in a blowout? where the game was over at the end of the first quarter. I mean, that made no sense to me. It's been the trend, right, guys? Mike Brown's kind of done the same thing. Jerry, how would you handle that situation this time of the season? Well, I mean, I think any any game you can give your main guys rest and, and not risk your, you know, the game itself. You know, I always, I always say I, I, I probably would keep guys in longer than some just because of the nature of the game anymore. You know the ten point, so called ten point lead with four minutes to go is not is not a lead. Yeah. And Jerry didn't win a lot, and so when he had a chance to win, he was going to make sure he got the W. Okay? Oh, <laughs> I plan. Hey, it about. wasn't a hey, Ryan. It yeah, wasn't Jerry's but, fault. That's not the I, point I I'm trying that. to make. I it know. wasn't Jerry's fault. He didn't have a lot to work with. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, I think some of the subs that, that they might not even want to go in. I don't know. They might, yeah. <laughs> they, they might have been scared. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Coach, my pants won't tear off. I'm going back to the bench. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I got I got a. Flu-like symptoms. Can't go tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right button management on my tearaway pants. Oh, my God. Those were some moments, I got to tell you. All right. Hey, uh, <laughs> I got to tell you, those were some unbelievable moments, Jerry. All right. I do want to tell you about New Works Plumbing. Uh, they've got a fix for you for your plumbing needs and repairs. Just go to New Works Plumbing. Uh, com or sacserviceplumbing.com. You can call the number on your screen as well. New Works Plumbing, they've got a fixed view and they're available 24 7 for all of your plumbing needs and repairs. That's New Works Plumbing. They've got a fix for you. Well, I, I got to believe that the Suns are going to win tonight, which is, is going to make life really hard for Sacramento to be a six seed. I'm still thinking they're going to be seven or eight. That's where I'm looking at. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, your odds. 
Yeah, I mean, I I'm an optimist by nature, and but it would take, you know, a lot of help from the other teams. I mean, I I think you know with the Kings, all they can do is what they can do, but uh, you know, but like say they need to win all three to have a chance, and and that's that's going to be tough. But, yeah, I know the the Suns um, get an extra day of rest, but look for tonight. Hopefully, the Clippers can push them, make them play forty minutes again, like uh, they did last night, Grant. Yeah, I'd be shocked. I think I think tonight's going to be a reversal of what we saw last night. What was the score? Forty-five to ten at the end of the first quarter last it was night. Something crazy. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Was it forty-five to ten? Whatever it I was, thought, it was the game. game I thought you were misspeaking the on the know, on the post. I think it was forty-five to ten at the end of the first quarter last night in Phoenix. Yeah. Nutty times. Nutty Can you imagine? I mean, again, we talk about this all the time. The fans that have tickets to the game tonight. And you got, I, I just got, they just got to be going nuts in New York at the league office seeing this. They're just got to be going well, what Napes, on earth, you know, Napes, luckily uh, it's luckily it was in LA. So fans don't actually have tickets in LA. Um, they're just like given to people. So uh, they won't well, know the difference. Well, yeah. unbelievable. It yeah, really I is. Well, we'll, be with you. we'll be with you tomorrow, Ryan, with the pregame uh, and then the three of us at halftime and then postgame. It's a playoff game, folks. I mean, it really is. It is uh, a playoff game. And if the Kings lose uh, either tomorrow or against the Suns, then they're going to be either a seven or eight seed. And that's the way it's looking. And, uh, you know, and again, I, if you go, here's the other scenario that we really haven't talked about this. If you lose tomorrow, and lose to the Phoenix Suns, you might, you might end up ninth because the Lakers, they're a game behind you. You own the tiebreaker, but I mean, you could also be looking at a real ugly scenario where you absolutely have to win the final game of the year against Portland just to make the eighth spot instead mm -hmm. of nine. And listen, folks, how many how many times have we said the Kings absolutely will win this game and have to win this game at home and they end up losing to a and, bad team? And do you know what time? Do you know what time the game is at versus Portland? Yeah, it's in the, in the afternoon. Right? Twelve thirty. What's that? Thirty. Twelve thirty in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah all the game all the games in the conference are at the same time. Yeah. Just so you know, it's at twelve thirty in the afternoon for Portland, too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, the, and and Ryan, the baskets are all ten foot high. All I know. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate that. It would make sense. They don't want anybody to throw the games, but yeah. yeah. Got it. Well, okay. well, it's like that whole the thing that bothers me the most is, is you know the not just the Clipper thing, but the Wimbanyama thing. You know, it's like uh, that's that's who people want to see against home gun and certainly. If you got a chance to beat, if, if yep. you're Minnesota and Denver, the only chance the Spurs have to beat them is to yep. with them playing. I, well, I, and, I know. Hey, Ryan, just so you know, and I, I know you realize this, but for everyone else, all the games on the last day start at the same time correct? in the respective conferences because the league doesn't want you to be scoreboard watching and then not play players based on an outcome of a game that's already been determined. So they just – the, all the games start at the same time in the East and in the West. And that's, I, I get that. It makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, we'll see what happens, but it won't matter if you don't win tomorrow and don't win against Phoenix. It, you, it don't matter if the game is played at freaking four in the morning. All right. <laughs> yeah. so. Well, well I'll tell you one thing, guys, I'll be ready because I'm going to get on my treadmill during the first yep. quarter. I'm going to get my game face on. Nice. Yep. That's not a pretty face. I'm going to have Ooh. it on. We like and, it. Uh, saying, we like bring it. on the Pelicans, a bunch of damn ugly birds. That's what Pelicans are. Bring them we on. We like it. Boom. We like it. Guys, thank you very much. It's been fun as always. Don't forget, tomorrow, playoff game, really. Pre-game right here, halftime, post-game. We got you covered. Uh, should be fun. It should be fun. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. We're going down to the wire in the NBA. Uh, it's going to be hard for the Clippers tonight. They might be calling guys out of the stands right now to ask if they would like to sign a, a 10 day contract. 10 day. Hello? And, you know? I got to go, guys. I'm headed to LA. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So long, everybody. Thanks for being with us right here on If You Don't Like That.